Greetings, listeners. Welcome back. I am your narrator and host, Beatles Fanais. Tonight, we continue following the story of a rookie cop and his partner who was assigned to a missing person case. So, sit back, relax, and listen to I Was a Police Officer investigating a missing person, and it was the worst case of my career. Part two. Prologue. This series of supernatural events I'm going to recollect to you has been kept extremely confidential and non-disclosed for a good 15 years. I was involved with this particular case back when I was a rookie, only being a police officer for about a year and a half. All areas and people I will refer to in this will have their names changed to protect their identity as well as my job. To continue, after the first part of this, I'm going to be showing the account we received from one family in particular who were staying at the camp when the camp host supposedly went missing. This conversation was recorded then transcripted. Here is the original recording. Officer Daniel, did you notice anything strange before the camp? host went missing? Such as, did you see anyone else roaming around the campsite or anything suspicious? Mother. Well, when we first got here, we tried to introduce ourselves to him, and he just ignored all of us until we left. He seemed mentally unstable and unfit to be maintaining a campground and was often whistling with a raspy, uneven tone, which got annoying when we were trying to enjoy the sounds of nature. Also, one weird thing was that during the middle of one of the nights, um, we heard something like hammering coming from outside our tent. My husband, went to investigate and found that the camped host was chopping firewood next to a roaring fire and it was about three o'clock in the morning. That was the last time we saw him and there were many other strange things that went on around the camp. I, I, I just don't know what to make of it. Officer Daniel did he seem intoxicated at all during any of this? Maybe he was unstable? Father, we tried to avoid him the best we could, so we aren't exactly sure if he was drunk or anything like that. Officer Daniel, is there anything else that you saw that we should be aware of? teenage son. I don't know if this pertains to the case, but I went hiking with my younger sister up to the side of that mountain over there, and while we were hiking, we found something. Officer Daniel, what did you find? Teenage son. Well, you see, I'm not exactly sure what it, what it was, but Someone had definitely been doing something up there. Officer Daniel. Describe it, please. Teenage son. We, we found a patch of trees that had bones strung up on their branches of, as if someone had tied them to it. In the middle of this patch of trees, there were rocks and there were... They, they were placed in a strange circle type thing and in there was a 
straight stick that held what looked to be some animal skull. Around the circle, those things were posted on the trees and, and, and there were pictures of people. I'm going to stop at this point in the interview because he had many questions that were not essential to know, but what the teenage son had hiked in on was what we investigated next. By the time we were interviewing these people, search and rescue had gone out in the forest but never found him. They did find some random cigarette butts mixed in the dirt, which tied him back to buying a pack of them the day from the lodge. So they thought they were closing in to finding him. However, they still couldn't find a trace of exactly where he went. While search and rescue were doing this, my partner and I were in charge of investigating the place that the teenager had described to us. When we finally found it, based on the description of how to get there from the boy, we took pictures of the area. It was a strange place and the random picture of people posted on the trees, all angled to where any one of them could be seen if you stood in the middle of the rock. I examined the photos trying to see if I recognized any of the people when Daniel said, isn't this that little girl who went missing in the woods last summer? I walked over and examined the picture and it matched the photo which our police department put in the newsletter, wondering if anyone had seen her around. Yeah, that is the girl, but why would someone put her picture here? It just didn't make sense to me. You don't suppose that these are all the pictures of the people who have gone missing? Daniel asked as he looked around. Only one way to be sure. Let's take a picture of each one and send it back for analysis. Maybe this is some weird shrine someone created, or it could just be a trophy shelf for someone's victims. Who knows? We might just soon find a picture of the man we are looking for, hung up here somewhere in the trees. I responded while brushing my stubby beard. Daniel agreed, and we photographed and documented the area. While we sent this information in, I decided to read some of what was written in the man's diary that I had taken from his trailer. It was a random, disturbing segment in a page from it, and it goes as follows. I need to appease it somehow, but I can't. It's following me everywhere. Everywhere I go, there's the damn thing. There's nothing I can do about it. Every time I feel it, I feel it getting closer behind me. I dart around and nothing is there. I see people in camp smiling and having a good time of their lives, not knowing the evil that I have just done. This is what I couldn't understand in this man's writing at the time was that he seemed as if someone or something was trying to get to him. but. There was no evidence providing that this was true. There was no forced entry into the man's trailer. It was as if he had just vanished without a trace. Later, Daniel and I were notified about the two pictures. <sighs> and the answer was mind boggling. Every single one of those people had gone missing in that forest area, ranging from 
20 years ago all the way to the present day. Either someone was being insensitive and made this or their trophy case or they just, we, we really didn't know. Why would someone want to make a trophy case of someone's victims whose deaths were all blamed and people were, I, I just don't know what to say. All of these people are still on the ongoing missing persons list in the woods. All I knew at the time was that this case began to grow far past than just a single missing person. Sometimes one person's perspective is completely different from another, even if they are both observing the same thing. This is rule one I learned while being a police officer. Always be prepared to know that you aren't prepared at all. Well, this case seems to be getting more and more bizarre. So stay tuned for part three. I was a police officer investigating a missing person in the woods, and it was the worst case of my career. Part three.